Pinball games are an integral part of Americana and have been since they first started flooding hangouts, bars, and diners in the 30s. Uh, are we on? We're here on location where one of many unexplained landings has just occurred. We're not exactly sure where they're coming from, but it seems Bally has a new game materializing all across the nation. Never before have so few made so much fun for so many. Watch it. Play it. Buy it. It's Attack from Mars! Watch as the people of Earth defend our precious planet. Yes, as they do the unthinkable, taking the fight all the way to Mars. Run away! Can we roll that? We've been receiving video transmissions from an unknown source. We're getting reports in from all over. They seem to have some sort of, did I hear that right? Yes, mind control abilities. With its mesmerizing gameplay, it's no wonder this Bally brainchild brings in astounding collections. Here at this local arcade, we've found folks testing out the new arrival. Attack from Mars embodies a universal sci-fi sort of theme. It's actually quite reminiscent of the 50s movies from the same genre. This game truly has all the elements of a classic. Simply remarkable. It's more understandable than any game I've seen. People of all kinds are getting hooked on these attention-getting Martians. That's right, Martians. These hair-raising madmen get hopping mad. They're sure to draw players in with their wacky antics and their tongue-in-cheek battle cries. Miss me, ha ha! San Francisco reports that the key to this creature is nailing the loop and ram shots. You can trigger a frenzied four-ball multi-ball. Yes, it's total annihilation! Our affiliate in New York tells us how incredibly easy it is to progress through this game with its centrally located three-bank target. There's also a fascinating strobe multi-ball, an industry first. Attack from Mars has it all. Easier to learn. Sure shots right up the middle to this mothership. You actually defend countries all around the globe from these menacing Martians. Die-hard players, don't despair. These deeper, more challenging game elements are just for you. And if you dare to beat these Martians at their own game and conquer all, the universe! Don't walk, run! To capture this collection monster! Easier to understand, timeless theme, a game for all players. It's Attack from Mars! Before it gets away. When you're visiting New Hampshire's beautiful beaches, walk right into the only restaurant located right on the beach, the Pirate's Cove and Peg Leg Lounge. In our dining room, you'll find a wide array of seafood delicacies, like shrimp, fish, lobster boiled or baked stuff, or take a break from the surf and sun to quench your thirst in the fully stocked Peg Leg Lounge. Share your dining voyage with us at the Pirate's Cove Restaurant and the Peg Leg Lounge, right on Wallace Sands Beach on Ocean Boulevard in Rye. By 1689, no merchant ship was safe. From Africa's Guinea coast to India, from the Caribbean to Newfoundland, pirates plied their brutal trade. Vessels caught unprotected were no match for these experienced sea wolves, a bawdy and lawless breed, at once capable of twisted brutality and a strange compassion. But scarcely 30 years later, 
pirating's golden age had ended. Notorious leaders such as Black Bart, Captain Kidd, and Calico Jack Rackman would become nothing more than a distant memory. However, one figure would be remembered beyond all others, not only for daring exploits and superb seamanship, but for a legendary and timeless beauty. Her name was Black Rose, Queen of the High Seas. Look smart with those cannons, boys. Black Rose features a cannon under the playfield. It's fired with a red button on the lockdown. Return fire is achieved when balls rocket back towards the player on the center rail. Players will also encounter a dynamic speech package and the first machine to combine three distinct video modes into one game. A bullseye! Operators will notice that a true pitch level has been mounted along the right shooter rail, standard equipment on all Bally games. Your aim is to first pirate jewels and treasure from another ship. Then load your cannon and ultimately sink it. Lighting all the letters in the words sink ship will let you attempt that final broadside. Black Rose begins with a skill shot to any one of the targets on the first three bank. A successful shot will open Davy Jones locker. The locker can also be opened a few other ways with successive shots around the upper small loop by completing all three stand-up target banks or by executing the three-bank ricochet shot. Once the locker has been opened, a shot to it will load the cannon. Hitting one of the major targets will award an additional sink ship letter. Hitting the flashing targets will result in a letter plus the displayed feature. When all the letters are lit, Sink the ship with a cannon shot to the broadside popper. Multi-ball will start when balls are locked in the pirate's cove. The lock can be activated a number of ways. By completing the word lock over the return and drain lanes, the lock might be lit after a successful video game. Polly, the game's random feature, can award lock lit. Or it can be earned with repeated shots to the pirate's cove itself. After one ball is locked, two ball multi-ball will start. During two ball multi-ball, a shot to one of the three major ramps will spot the player one sink ship letter. Sending both balls back to the Pirate's Cove will begin three-ball multi-ball. Now, the major ramp shots will be worth two sink ship letters. During multi-ball, players should try to collect the jewels and treasure chests. Collecting all ten will begin the hidden treasure bonus, when all major targets are worth big points. During single ball play, the game will cycle through the seven mast values, which are collected with a shot to the broadside popper. Awards include ramp millions, treasure chest, as well as the game's three video modes. Collecting all the mast values lights the jackpot, which is collected with a shot up the left ramp. Another way to win big points is with the two- and three-way combination shots. The two-way combo begins at the upper right flipper. The ball is then directed to the left loop, which feeds the lower left flipper. One final shot to the jet bumpers collects the two-way combo award. The three-way award is collected by executing a two-way combo after a shot up the left ramp, or after the ball has exited the jet bumpers through the lower rollover. Shots to the whirlpool ramp build these values towards extra ball. One effective initial strategy 
is to complete this self-feeding shot repeatedly so as to collect an extra ball and light the lock in the process. Let's take a look at the cannon mechanism mounted under the playfield. High velocity is achieved through the catapult, which first debuted on big guns and taxi. Once loaded, the catapult will oscillate, allowing the player to select his shot. This movement is achieved by means of a geared motor located at the base of the unit. No wires are connected to the fire button itself. Instead, there is a pressure-sensitive membrane switch mounted on the cabinet. A theme that has captured the imagination of the world for centuries has now been brought to life inside this bold, colorful cabinet. Black Rose succeeds because it combines this kind of recognition with novel play features never before seen on any pinball machine. Three separate video modes, high velocity ramps, a powerful rotating cannon, return fire, and an unprecedented cast of bawdy characters. Now is the time to embark on your own profitable voyage with Black Rose, Queen of the High Seas. It's all at the Spectacular Shrine Circus in the Ford Fieldhouse, March 6th through 11th. Free parking is available. Get your tickets at the Shrine Temple, Ticketmaster, or call 957-4100 today. The annual Shrine Circus. Don't miss it. From the very first glimpse, it's obvious this game is like no other. A study of symmetry, form, and function. Circus Voltaire makes an awesome presentation in any location. From the bold display of colors, to the ingenious mechanics, every inch of this game is a challenge. <laughs> Circus Voltaire is a powerful surge of electrifying sensation. This game features an innovative one-piece back glass design for ease, simplicity, and a more striking display. In a brilliant move, the Darkmation panel's line of sight has been lowered to the playfield for better integration with gameplay. The circus arena itself is lighted from above by this flowing current of authentic neon energy. There are cannons, contraptions, mystified magic, and six different multi-ball modes. Presiding over this pandemonium is the daunting and mischievous Ringmaster. I am the Ringmaster. He is relentless as he taunts the player again and again. I will never back down. Circus Voltaire is simple, yet challenging. And as always, our pinball games are created to appeal to the widest audience possible. Successfully complete these eight marvels of skill no and defeat Not the again. ringmaster to join the circus and become a Voltaire performer. Now this next level of action is where the skilled player excels. Five challenging tests of dexterity and timing are the only thing that keeps the player from unmasking the true identity of the ringmaster. The action is fast, the shots are smooth, and there are so many wonders to experience at the circus. There is nothing anywhere like Circus Voltaire. <laughs> we interrupt this program to bring you something really cool from Silverwood. Mm-hmm. 
In 1986, Williams released one of its most popular pinball machines, the Comet. Comet was such a success that players and operators demanded another game based on the same theme. So two years later, Williams responded with a machine that was even more profitable, the Cyclone. Operators now have a chance to boost their earnings with a brand new game, one that offers new attractions, strong collections, and that same timeless amusement park theme. Now, from the designer of both Comet and Cyclone, comes the indispensable capstone to the roller coaster series, the Hurricane. The Hurricane is sure to draw record crowds thanks to the new attractions it offers. Ride the world's greatest roller coaster, the Hurricane, all the way around the playfield. Ride the double Ferris wheel. See the juggler. Dunk the dummy. My grandma throws better than you. Whoa. And try your luck with a spin of the mystery wheel. Two million. The hurricane also has a feature that will be familiar to Comet and Cyclone players alike. The Comet Ramp. The game begins with a unique skill shot that requires two trips around the hurricane ramp. After the ball is shot around the playfield to start the game, players have a chance to collect the skill shot award by sending it around one more time. During normal gameplay, the hurricane ramp is lit by completing the right bank of targets. Then, successive rides in the hurricane will be worth 200,000 points and increment by 25,000 points. After the second ride on the hurricane, the million will light. This can be collected by one more ride. It's clown time! One of the primary goals of the game is to enter clown time, when all playfield values are elevated for about 30 seconds. The clown's face starts with various features lit. This carries over from game to game. But when the clown's face is fully lit, you'll have a chance to enter clown time. His facial features are lit by completing different game features. Light his eyes by riding both the hurricane and the double Ferris wheel. His cheeks will light when you complete the left and right target banks. Dunk the dummy to light his nose and ride the comet to light his mouth. After his whole face is lit, a ride on the hurricane will begin clown time. It's clown time! For the next 30 seconds, not only will all targets on the playfield be worth 50,000 points, but visit one of the major attractions and see the clowns perform their amazing tricks. Watch this! Look, Ma, no hands! To enter multiball, you must first complete the three bank on the left side of the playfield. Multiball will then begin as soon as two balls are locked in the juggler. During multi-ball, scores are elevated on certain key playfield shots. Successive hurricane ramp shots are worth one, two, and finally five million points, as indicated by the colored lights above the ramp. Loading two balls onto the Ferris wheel at once will score one million points. All three balls will score two million. Once multi-ball has ended, the game will award one second of special playfield scoring for each second spent in multiball. The score multiplier is selected randomly and will either be two, three, or five times standard playfield scores. To score a jackpot, a player must first light all the letters in the word palace. As with the clown's face, the number of letters lit carries over from game to game. Additional letters can either be won with a spin of the mystery wheel or they can be earned by riding the hurricane while the spot palace light is lit. Spot Palace will light during the skill shot or after one of the target banks has been completed. When all the palace letters are lit, go see the juggler with a ride on the jackpot train.
A visit to the juggler is also required to spin the mystery wheel once the right bank of targets is complete. Thrill, kill, magic, prizes! Lucky players can then receive awards ranging from extra ball and five million points to instant clown time and instant ball lock. Other players will find that spinning the mystery wheel doesn't necessarily guarantee a prize. When the game begins, a level of the bonus multiplier will flash. To advance the bonus multiplier, you must first dunk the dummy by hitting his target twice. Once to gain admission, My grandma throws better than you! and a second time to knock him off his platform. When the flashing level is reached, extra ball will light. It can then be advanced by the player across the return and drain lanes. To light the double Ferris wheel, complete the three bank of targets on the left side of the playfield. After that, a ride will collect the Ferris wheel bonus. To increase the bonus, send the ball into the jet bumper. Operators should be aware that while Hurricane offers players a new amusement park, there is nothing unfamiliar about the mechanical workings of the game. The double Ferris wheel is similar to the single wheel found in Cyclone, and it's operated by a simple motor and drive belt mechanism. The spinning wheel under the back glass is also driven by a single motor, which is activated periodically during gameplay. Operators will be well acquainted with all mechanical features on the playfield. Drop targets, micro switches, stand-ups, ball poppers, and ejects, all of which are extensively tested to simulate years of continuous gameplay. Hurricane has been uniquely designed to attract all types of players, novice through expert. Not only is it friendly and easy to approach, but it carries on a tradition of games that have proven themselves strong collectors in any location. Take advantage of the opportunity to continue the profitable tradition that began with Comet and Cyclone. Complete the set. Ride the hurricane. like he knows this game inside and out. It's because he does. He's the one who designed it. Pat, you're shaking it. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a real-life physical device that you're allowed to deal with physically. And if you can uh, get it to play better that way, that's fair. You could say that Pat Lawler has a dream job. His work is other people's play. I've designed games literally since I was five or six years old. And in order to get for anybody in any business to get to do what you want to do, what you like to do, is, uh, is very nice. What he does is design games for WMS Industries, the makers of Valley Amusement Games and Williams Electronic Games. You know, while a lot of people think that video games are the wave of the future, for Pat, pinball is where it's at. Pinball is real. Uh, you know, if we take the glass off, you can touch it. It's three-dimensional. There are, there are mechanical devices that are functioning, that are moving, that are interacting with the ball. And that's something that video can't do. There are only 20 pinball game designers in the world. And while it may be fun, it's also serious business. The company places a great deal of responsibility on the game designers. Um, you've been through our factory and there are 300 people out there whose livelihoods depend on us doing something that the company can sell. But the bottom line in any dream job is personal satisfaction. I get to do something that millions of people across the world are going to see and enjoy and have fun with. People I'm never going to meet, people I'm never going to see, but when they finish their job tonight, they're gonna to be playing one of my games.
and that makes me feel good. Steve Baskerville, Channel 2 News. Paradise, lucky seven, cut yourself a piece of heaven. You and me, we can have it all. Any corporation today that's successful is listening to its customers, is listening to what they have to say, and reading their mail. Williams prides itself on that, of listening to its customers and providing what they request in our product development. Some people have been telling us that they need more choices in pinball, games with easier to understand rules or simpler layouts. And by taking a good evaluation of the situation and listening to our customers, we have exactly what they've asked for, and that's jackpot. Welcome to the state of the art in electronic entertainment. Williams' latest development, Jackpot, is online and ready to take you to a sci fi landscape of virtual gambling. Name your game Dice, Poker, Kino, Slots. Jackpot has them all. This game is an ingenious combination of two blockbuster hits from the past. Pinbot and The Machine are back and now they're better than ever. These familiar faces are your hosts for the best time in town. As guests in their cosmic casino, you're invited to bounce around at your leisure or test your luck at a game of chance and try to hit it big. Big point. The spacious casino playfield keeps things fun and exciting. Other casinos don't allow cheating, but this one does. Rapidly push the buy in button during the game of chance and see if Pinbot will distract the dealer and put the odds in your favor. You're cheating. In Jackpot, the rules are easy to learn and the earnings are out of this world. The machine is ready to deal and Pinbot has an ace up his sleeve with your name on it. The fun begins when you ante up and try a skill shot into the vortex. Make the center hole and win three times the normal payout. On the play field, your potential for winning is unlimited. This series of colorful targets is your Kino card. Each target marks a square on the card that can win you millions during the Kino game mode. Pinbot hides a poker face behind this visor. Hit all of the targets and he'll open up to reveal the multi-ball locks. Lock two balls and then get ready for some challenging multi-ball play. Pick a card, any card. Shoot the drop targets to collect playing cards. The better your hand, the more you win. Collect all five cards and receive millions. The Game Saucer feature activates the four virtual gambling modes that allow you to cash in your winnings on the spot or push your luck and try for double or nothing. Shoot into the Game Saucer to begin the flashing mode. In Kino, the points you receive depend directly on the number of squares you've lit on the play field. The more squares you have, the better your chances to score. With all four modes linked, it's time for some outrageous scoring in the Casino Run. Casino Run! This unique play sequence allows you to rack up millions and millions of dollars in points and special bonus prizes, like extra balls or free games. Enter the game saucer or the ball locks again to spin the giant slot machine. You can play it safe and cash out or risk the bank and let it ride. Don't stop now. Let it ride. Keep shooting. 
Your potential for scoring stops only when the timer runs out or you get a bomb. I'm busted. Jackbot lets you live out your wildest fantasies of winning a fortune. This game is everything you want in a pinball machine and more. Go with the sure bet and hit it big with Jackbot. It's the ace of your sleeve. Players have said to us that they would like to play a game that has a familiar play field, a platform. That's why we have combined the play field of Pinbot and the machine into Jackbot so that the player starts with a familiar platform with a familiar base. It's one hell of a game and it's a lot of fun to play. My lords, my ladies, be treated like royalty on your birthday this year and come celebrate with CFTO TV and Medieval Times. Watch Eye on Toronto next week for details on how you could win a dinner and show package for you and nine friends on your birthday to Medieval Times Dinner and Tournament at the CNE. Rewind the hands of time. Relive the lives of the Knights of the Realm on your birthday with Medieval Times and CFTO TV. starts off as a good versus evil thing back in the ancient times. The basic object of the game in playing Medieval Madness is to destroy the King of Pain. He's the evil warrior who's taken over the land and he's taken over all the castles. Fire! I am the Duke of Bourbon! <gasps> the King of Pain has five evil men that are under his his leadership. And each of these guys is a, is kind of a humorous tone. Um, the Duke of Bourbon, who is kind of this drunk guy who you're, you're trying to blow out of the air. There's the Earl of Ego, who's this real pompous guy who you just love to destroy his castle because he's so annoying. I am the Earl of Ego, and I am far superior to you. The one thing that uh, your beginner player, the first thing they'll see is the exploding castle. And this, this brings a lot of excitement to the game and keeps people interested. You have to hit the drawbridge and the drawbridge will come down. And then once that's down, there's a gate inside. And so you gotta hit the gate. And once the gate pops up, you can shoot into the castle and then you see this great show of the castle physically blowing apart on the playfield. Stop it! Another fun feature of the game is the trolls. These guys surprise a lot of people the first time you play because they're, they're hiding under the playfield normally and when you make the right shot, they'll pop up from the playfield. Trolls rule! So you're trying to hit them three times to destroy them and then they go back down. And all along this, the trolls will taunt you and, and say things to you and... Ow! That didn't hurt a bit! There's a big dragon over the ramp and the whole concept on there is to make the ramp three times and then you're able to shoot way up into the back into the damsel tower. And they're asking you to save me, save me. This is like totally medieval. Over on the left side when you fall into the catapult, you get, you get to throw projectiles at the castle. And when you fall in there enough, you actually get to pick the projectile. So there's one of five different humorous things, like a cat and a bowling ball, that you get to throw at the castle and see it explode. Fire! People enjoy laughing as they play the game. So if you look closer at the game, you'll see all these little elements, like the cow flying in the back glass, or the troll wearing gym shoes. You know, there's, there's all these humorous, wacky things going on in the kingdom. Attack from Mars was a, was a really strong earning pin last year. And we're, we're showing in our early testing that Medieval Madness is earning even better than Mars. So we're really looking at this being a blockbuster game. My tenure in the industry started back in 1937. I came into the industry when games were being changed over from battery power to electrical power. It seems that like about every 10 to 15 years, uh, 
uh, the pin game industry seems to lose a little bit of uh, acceptance in the field. Medieval Madness is an exciting game to play. It could conceivably be, be a game that resurrects this industry. I'm Dennis Nordman. I'm Jim Strompolis. I'm Dan Forden. I'm Patrick Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> You are about to enter another dimension with your host, pilot, and DJ, Captain Bizarre. Tonight, you'll meet the man behind the mustache, who is the star of the new Bally Pinball Machine, The Party Zone. I'm Captain Bizarre! Almost live from The Party Zone! Party Zone, based on a place where, according to the captain, land ends and the party begins. It's a real something for everybody pinball. Skill shots, combined with 3D animation, Incoming! raging ramps, and a cast of strange characters, the Party Zone is the place to be. Let's not forget excellent rules that build to a real experience, the Big Bang. Incoming! The animated dot matrix display and lifelike talking heads are features that mean the party zone will take your earnings way, way, way out there and a sound package with player-selectable tunes ranging from hot originals to licensed classics, including the Who's Pinball Wizard, the Party Zone will keep any location bobbing. So what's your opinion, Captain? Is it fun? Oh, yeah! And the fun begins with the Skill Shot Door Prize. Starting at one million points! Wow! Completing the bop lane lights the dance contest, and advances the bonus booster. Hey, what do you do during the dance contest, Captain? Bop till you drop. What the captain means is, a shot back to the top activates the dancing dummy, and the jumper bumpers are worth 100,000 points. How about that dancing dummy? Ain't he something? Too much caffeine for that guy. Dancing can sure leave a player hungry for more. What do you want to do next, Captain? Hey, let's eat! Roger, Captain, and we can do just that with the Eat, Drink, and Be Merry sequence shot worth up to six million points. Players can get way out of control 
whenever they want to by completing the four bank targets. The payoff lane then lights for one of four major scoring opportunities. Five million points. Boppers, one million each. 10x playfield values. Extra special special. And speaking of special, get a load of this guy. Now appearing, the supersonic robotic comic. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's a laugh attack! <laughs> yeah, it sure is a laugh attack, where players can earn 100,000 points per hit anywhere on the play field. But that's just one of several random awards, which include extra ball, big points, bonus booster, and the surprise party. For me? No, not you. Hey, Bizarre, do you know what time it is? It's request time! What do we do now, Captain? Pick your fame, Dave. Uh, the name's Dan. Players have control over what tunes they hear at any time during the game. From country? to some cool jazz. To some butt wriggling funk. To the classic pinball wizard, how apropos. But beware. The captain has his own unique taste in music. The request? Here's one of my faves. Come fly away, please. Come fly, come fly away. Yeah, now this game really takes off. Hey, let's head over to the Cosmic Cottage to meet and greet Pinball's greatest partiers, the party animals. How are you doing? Hey, get your paws off me. The party monsters. Good evening. Your hands are cold. And the party dudes, man. Hey, dude. Let's party. So now what time is it? Hey, boys and girls, it's happy hour. Yeah. Fill her up with rocket fuel and blast off. Through the ozone. Multiball. And during multiball, the more rocket fuel you earn, the farther you go. Every shot up the rocket ramp scores the current value of the rocket meter for multiple jackpots. Top off the tank and get ready for the Big Bang. It's not just a theory anymore. This is weird. What an experience! I like it! Whoa, 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 whoa. Awesome! There's no place like home till you've been to the zone. The party zone. I'd like to talk a little about some of the service aspects of this game. When we design pinball games, we do try to keep service in mind. Um, you'll notice the play field is essentially a single level play field which makes it easy to service and, and clean all the areas. There's no hidden areas. The buterets are designed to be removed without removing any other parts. Um, the rocket can be taken off with only two screws and the same for the cosmic cottage. Probably the most complicated feature on this game is this talking and turning head right here. However, it's not all that difficult and I'll show it to you right now. This is the mechanism here. It consists of a small motor that, that turns the shaft and a little coil that moves the jaw up and down. I have one here in the bottom of the cabinet so you can see it. It's, uh, here's the motor, here's the coil, and, and this is the jaw that moves up and down. And we have a head, just a simple hollow molded rubber head that fits over the top of it. Oh, 
Party zone! We're side zone! Uh, wrong game, pal. But it's the right game for your location, so become a frequent flyer on a fantasy excursion that will take you way out there to the party zone. Lyman Sheets Jr. sure plays a mean pinball. He scored 500 million points to win the third international pinball championship this weekend. About 500 pinball wizards from around the world gathered in New York for the competition. Sheets won $3,000 in prize money and probably a few free games. That's what we're getting into. The leading edge of time. Imagining what the future can hold. Welcome to the 21st century. New challenges, new technologies, new opportunities. I wonder what it'll mean. What it does mean is exponential innovation. Gee, exponential innovation. Yep, that's the big word. Innovation. So make no small plans. Change for a changing world. No limits. Don't even think of limitations. Think big. Think big? Yep. Think really big, because that's where we're going. Yeah. Are you ready? Welcome to a new age of game. Are you ready? In every generation, there is a paradigm shift, a change so big that it redefines us. Mary had a little man. Mankind is always exploring, always pushing the envelope of what is possible. Base here. The eagle has landed. Building, refining, changing into something new. The world around us is always changing. No matter how hard some may try to stop it, change is constant. I have a dream today. Innovation leads to evolution. Evolution becomes a revolution. And man will always strive for perfection. Once in a lifetime, someone leaps over the edge and forever changes the way we think. It all began in the middle of a cornfield in Marengo, Illinois. If you can imagine this uh, farmland, that's really where it began. Uh, you know, two guys in a garage with uh, limited tools and, and limited time. And so we locked ourselves up. Uh, George drove out here every day for a few weeks. The very first thing I did was I built a proof of concept model. It's like quarter scale. As I started translating the sketches to the three-dimensional foam core model, I realized this is going to work. So Pat and George threw together a prototype so that we could see what it was that they had in mind. Uh, we actually um, built a prototype of, of what is now called Pin 2000. We called it a hollow pin. Fired it up using uh, George's old Amiga and uh, played with where we wanted the image and how we wanted to look and, and all of that. And uh, when we were done, we, we threw this thing in the back of uh, Pat's truck and drove it in. And, and uh, what we had, uh, became Pinball 2000. If you could make the perfect game, where would you start? It would need to have a new technology never before seen, one that makes all previous games seem old and tired. It would have to be truly interactive, combining the physical and the virtual. Easily convertible, kittable, a modular system, that could change and adapt to meet specific needs. Repair would have to be fast and easy. Software updates should be a phone call away. And it needs to have that intangible quality that will bring back players again and again. 
When we sat down to make this game, we made this huge list of everything that was negative uh, and everything that was positive about the product as we know it. We wanted to have a game that was reliable. We wanted to have a game that earned more money. We wanted to have a game that was more exciting. Pinball 2000, as we know it, is direct result of all of the things that were requested by operations and distribution. Pinball 2000 is the next generation pinball platform. For the first time, video has been completely and successfully integrated into the pinball experience. The video image and the play field have become one. It's like physically interacting with a movie. Imagine that you have this, this real ball, this, this real inch and a sixteenth silver steel sp sphere, and that sphere, that ball, comes in contact with a video object and it creates a reaction. And that video object is in, appears to be almost a hologram, a, a real thing living in this world of wood and plastic. And that stuff feels like you're right there. It's not happening away from the play field, it's happening on the play field, right in front of you. The Pinball 2000 system is completely modular. Its kittable cabinet is a marvel of engineering. Replace the easily removable play field, change the software, and in a matter of minutes, you have a brand new game. Pinball 2000 is built to change. Pinball 2000 is here to stay. Uh, we've engineered Pinball 2000 to be very durable, and we think that the flexibility that is in Pinball 2000 in terms of kitting is going to give an operator tremendous flexibility in terms of how long he operates this product and how successful he is with the product. Pinball 2000 is modular in every respect and it is a system. Um, the modularity is again a request from our customers for serviceability to begin with. Um, and every piece of that system that needs to come out comes out easily and quickly. Pinball 2000's advanced technology makes maintenance quick and easy. The intuitive diagnostic screen allows you to easily troubleshoot problems. Pinball 2000 is so evolved in its design, it's simple. Pinball 2000 is the most serviceable pinball machine in the history of the game. One of the exciting new things is a feature called the location key. The operator now is able to have a key which will let him take the hand protector off and remove the playfield glass. And this allows any kind of minor repair that might keep the game working, such as a stuck ball or maybe a broken rubber band. And the system is designed so that the playfield is locked down when this key is used, so there's no access to the electronics, the bookkeeping, or most importantly, the cash box. The serviceability is just, it's a different world. I mean, if you carry an extra play field with you, you can bring the play field to the shop, have it cleaned, have it tweaked, make sure it's working right, take it back to location, bring the one back that needs to be serviced. If you don't want your servicemen, you know, working in, you know, under what would be the ideal conditions. But the magic, the magic of the convertibility is the play field. And the play field literally pops out of the machine and disconnects in seconds. Revenge from Mars is the first game ever for the Pinball 2000 system. The story unfolds before your eyes as your battle seamlessly travels between the real and virtual worlds within. We've had tremendous fun making, uh, make, taking the, the lore of these Martians coming to Earth and you fighting this battle to defend Earth and eventually go, get to Mars. And, and take the battle back to Mars, and it's like playing a movie. It's more so like playing a movie than pinball has ever been. Pinball today, starting now with Pinball 2000, will never be the same as it has been before. And I say that positively. It will never be the same. Whatever your preconceived notions have been for what pinball might present to the player, throw it out the window. And once again, you've got a product that once the players look inside the cabinet, uh, they're going to look inside and say, wow, those other games look old. I have to play the new game. What we've done is closed our eyes and imagined what everything we've wanted pinball to be, um, everything that we think everyone has wanted pinball to be. 
And that is what Pinball 2000 is. So you can see why we say, welcome to the 21st century. Welcome to Pinball 2000. Welcome to the new image in Pinball. Welcome to the 21st century. Is, is there a Mr. Williams or a Mr. Bally? Or? Yeah, there once was. Uh, How many people work? Uh, you got working here? Uh, we have uh, literally about 1,500 here. Steve, how, how old are you? <laughs> I'll be 81 this December. Do you still play pinball? Oh, hell yes, I love it. Why, why is it that the ball always seems to go right down the middle between the flippers? I don't know. Why are the scores always so darn high? It, it seems like pinball, you know, why not a football score like 27 to 10 or something? What do you think of the rock musical Tommy? Was it realistic? Yes. Is there a pinball wizard? Have you ever met one? No. You, you, where do they come up with the sounds for these things? And you're doing sounds for the games, right? Yes, yeah. Can you okay. tell us what game this is going to be for? No, I can't. Top secret? Yes. Hey! That was very angry. Yeah. Watch those hands, Buster! So it's basically some guy, like, with his hands all over a woman. Watch those hands, Buster! Yeah, that's basically the mode. So this one isn't meant for the kids. It's not a family game. It's an operator adjustment. <laughs> okay. Whatever that means. Uh, well, that, that means the... Are you going to clean it up for the kids? Well, yeah, the operator has the, has the option of whether or not he has the, the full-blown sound package or the, the PG... Or the really sound lascivious sound. sound package. Right. She didn't do the voices for the Adams Family, right? No, she didn't. Who, who did those? Raul, Julia, and Angelica Houston did those voices. The real people. The real people. What's your name? John Tobias. And you are? Ed Boone. And these are video games. These are not uh, pinball, right? Correct. Ever come like into a video arcade and sneak up behind somebody playing the game and say, that's me? And... Oh, that was blood. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lots of blood. <laughs> this isn't really meant for kids, though, either, though, is it? Uh, well, actually, it is. <laughs> pinball game from uh, from the 30s yeah from the early 1930s and you're one of the designers oh that was see i think you need a little more flipper there <laughs> okay You, you essentially have a workshop, so everywhere in, the, everywhere in my office there's, uh, there's parts of games and pieces of games to come and, and uh, pieces of games past. This is Pat Lawler, and he's designed a few games that you may have heard of, because all of them are industry classics. Bonsai Run, Earthshaker, Whirlwind, Funhouse, Adam's Family, and Twilight Zone. You first have to get people to understand why the game you're designing is different. They have to be able to look inside and they have to say, wow, I wonder what that will do. Pat has just completed a brand new game, one that expands on a theme with a proven collections record. Everything about the game has been customized to produce strong collections in our current market. It's a brand new design philosophy. The market for pinball in general right now uh, has changed dramatically from two years ago. It's no longer good enough just to bat a ball around on a play field. You, you have to be part of that story. You have to understand the story. You have, to, you have to discover what there is to discover in that world. The new world that Lawler and company have created is a synthesis. Proven pinball machinery and a universal theme. From the time I had done Funhouse, there was always the intention to do a second version with two heads, with two dummies. Think of it as Funhouse meets road construction, or destruction as the case might be. It's the next flipper experience in a line of industry classics, Roadshow. The central features of the playfield are this duo, Red and Ted. Identical to Rudy from Funhouse, but twice the fun. As you're about to see, two heads really are better than one. The first thing that a person sees when he walks up to Roadshow is, is these, these two little characters in construction helmets. And everybody in the world, the world over, knows what construction is. 
So everybody kind of knows what these two are about when they just see them sitting in the game before they play it. Red and Ted are a cross-country construction crew hell-bent on taking you on the adventure of a lifetime. From east to west, you'll travel through 18 cities, each one holding a brand new adventure. You'll be smashing cabs in New York, thawing out construction colleagues in Minnesota, and blowing up toll booths in Chicago. This city-to-city -city tour has been put into the game for one very specific reason, buy-in. In this pinball machine, just because you can play three balls and just because you're an extremely good player does not mean you will see all of what is in this game. And in fact, you will have to pay a buy-in, a buy-in, a buy-in in order to see the whole game. Because you cannot get from point A to point B by skipping around. You have to go through all the steps you would just as you would in a video game. Roadshow is a brand new concept in pinball design. Not only does buy-in play an essential role in the rules, but in response to market demands, the game is at once more entertaining while actually being less complex. You cannot overlap things in this game. If you're doing one thing, you're doing that one thing. You're not doing multiple things. Other playfield features include the earth-shaking blasting zone, falling rocks, a souvenir shop, Ted's bulldozer, bridge out ramps, and Red and Ted's boombox, which will play tunes from country music star Carlene Carter. Today's pinball market is evolving, and it demands innovations. Roadshow is right for that market for a number of reasons. The first reason is that the game addressed score inflation. Okay, we, we've made the game more easily understood by the average person. The second reason is, is that the game is easy to play for the average person. All he has to do is shoot the ball straight up the play field and the game automatically tells him what it is he's supposed to do. And he doesn't have to learn anything other than that in order to have a lot of fun playing Roadshow. The third thing is, is the linear rule set in the game, which suggests that you have to buy in in order to see all of the game. You cannot see the entire game. Even if you're a very good player, on just 50 cents, you have to buy in and continue the game that you're playing in order to see everything. And the fourth thing is, you want to do this because there's a proven concept in it, in the, in the heads of the dummies, in, in their interaction, in their ability to drive people to see the game, to, to, to say to themselves, before they put their money in, wow, I wonder what this game is going to do. I want to put money in to see what this game is going to do and, and, and how it will act. Why do grown-ups become pinball fanatics? Is it a quest for power? You get to control a world. A religious experience? There's some uh, zen to it. Or something not suitable for television. It's the most fun you can have with your pants on. Unless, of course... You are now witnessing the premiere of a brand new coin-op product. It comes from the minds that brought you the smash hit, Adam's Family. It combines two games into one. It rewards skilled players with more than just points. It dispenses tokens. It's made for all locations, bars, arcades, everywhere. It is the answer for today's market. Introducing Safecracker, the token pin. Essentially, Safecracker combines the flipper action of pinball and the strategy of a board game, two popular pastimes in one. You begin play on a pinball playfield with familiar elements such as flippers, drop targets, bumpers, and ramps. Once you lock a ball, you'll start a new game, up here, where the object is to get to the center. And if you succeed, you'll win one of these, multi-purpose tokens. Safecracker is a game of skill, yet it's accessible to all types of players. Note its distinctive cabinet. We've managed to pack more earning power into a smaller footprint. 
You see, Safe Cracker is time-based. Unlike most pin games, losing a ball doesn't mean you lose your turn as long as you have more time. One way to maintain playing time is with a shot to this spinner. That sparkle. These three entrances are your link to the bank above. Now, you're so close to the safe, you can almost smell the money inside. Sneak through the halls of this trusted institution, avoiding the guards, dodging dogs, and if you have the right touch, you can break the bank. Vault penetration is imminent. Now, keep your eye on the prize there, ahead of you. Here it comes. A token, one of 10 varieties. They're collectible, tradable, and you can drop them back into the game to access higher levels of play. Think of the token as a trophy of skill. Your players will. Yet Safe Cracker is fun with or without the token vending option. Now that you've made off with the cash, you're back on the first level where you can once again case the bank for another hit. Safe Cracker can go anywhere a pin can go. As a matter of fact, Safe Cracker is suitable in more locations than any other product we've ever made. It even comes equipped with operator adjustable software that makes it adaptable to any and all jurisdictions. Our industry thrives on technological advance. As the leader in Coinop, we think it's time for something new. A new vision, a new standard. It's time for Safecracker, the token pin. Only from Bally. Welcome to the age of change. Hi, I'm Marshall Brodeen. Most magic tricks are easy once you know the secret. Now take. Since the beginning of time, man has longed for the knowledge and power to affect the physical world and beyond. Entire lifetimes have been spent in relentless pursuit, only to expire in the depths of despair. Legends speak of such greats as Merlin and Houdini. Now, here is the story of another. This young woman aspired to be a great magician, yet lack of talent bound her to cleaning the stage rather than performing on it. Welcome, Chosen One. You now stand before the very source of power. Behold, the magic. Beginning of time, 
man has sought to control the mystical forces of magic. This omnipotent machine can give you that which you desire most. The theater of magic will test your mettle as it guides you through the realms of the occult. If you perform well, you may rise to Master Magician, but it will not be easy. As an apprentice, you are ready. All of these mysterious devices await your commands. Don't be afraid. Embrace the machine and fulfill your destiny. Look into the mirror as you enter the theater. Now use the magic trunk Strike it with the silver sphere. Excellent. Your power is growing, novice. Can you open the trap door, cross the void, and mentally force the sphere to obey your commands? Yes. Concentrate, and use your mind to awaken the spirit ring. You've done it. Only a talented journeyman could accomplish that. Strike the captured sphere and escape the teeth of the screaming tiger saw. You have come a long way and your skill is great, magician. But do you have the power to become a master? These death-defying illusions must all be performed flawlessly before you can earn the chance to attempt mastery. Are you worthy? Are you strong enough? Do you have the magic? Yes, I have the magic! And so a new legend was born. The young woman truly believed. For that fact alone, the theater of magic granted her immortality and bestowed her with powers beyond imagination. The time has come for another legend. Do you have the magic?